Good morning and welcome again to our daily service. This week we've been looking at some verses in Colossians which tell us wonderful truths about the Lord Jesus. At Christmas we often marvel at the fact that Jesus came into the world for us. But actually yesterday we saw that we came into the world for him because all things were created by him and for him. Wonderful truths. And Paul is wanting to give us a much bigger, truer understanding of who Jesus is so that all the more we might learn to trust him and hold fast to him. I'm going to pray that that would be true of us now. Let's pray. Father God, you know how easily we're distracted by other things, how quickly our hearts can wander. And so please help us now by your spirit to see afresh the beauty and glory of your son, that we might fix our eyes on him. Help us to grasp his utter supremacy so that we might learn to rest in his utter sufficiency. For his name's sake. Amen. Yesterday we were thinking about the fact that Jesus is the creator of all things. Today we're going to see he's the sustainer of all things. But Before we look at our next verse in Colossians, we're going to read together some verses from a psalm. It's Psalm 104, which celebrates this truth that God is the creator and sustainer of our world. Join with me in saying... Praise the Lord, my soul. Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendour and majesty. The Lord wraps himself in light as with a garment. He stretches out the heavens like a tent and lays the beams of his upper chambers on their waters. He makes the clouds his chariot and rides on the wings of the wind. He makes winds his messengers flames of fire his servants. He sets the earth on its foundations. It can never be moved. He made the moon to mark the seasons and the sun knows when to go down. You bring darkness, it becomes night and all the beasts of the forest prowl. The lions roar for their prey and seek their food from God. The sun rises and they steal away. They return and lie down in their dens. Then people go out to their work, to their labour until evening. How many are your works, Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. All creatures look to you to give them their food at the proper time. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. The psalm celebrates God as the creator and sustainer of all things. And Paul tells us Jesus is that God. Here's our verse for today. He is before all things and in him all things hold together. As the creator, Jesus is before all things, eternal, uncreated. He was there in the beginning. But he's not like the deist watchmaker who made some beautiful watch, wound it up and left it to look after itself, perhaps returning one day to claim it as his own. Not at all. All things were made by Jesus and for Jesus, but more than that, they could not continue to exist without him. In him, they hold together. Without him, apart from him, they could not exist for one moment. Our world would fall apart, disintegrate. As the writer of Hebrews says, he sustains all things by his powerful word. Atoms cohere, the, the planets spin in their orbits, our hearts 
beat only because of Jesus. All things hold together in him, upheld by him. Many people, of course, live as though Jesus were an irrelevance to their lives. But it's only by his grace and power that they live at all. He's often out of our thoughts, but if we slipped his mind even for a moment, we would cease to be. In him, all things hold together. There's great encouragement in that truth. Perhaps our lives at times feel as though they're falling apart. Often we live as though we must hold things together, sustain our world. And frankly, we can't. But wonderfully, he can. He's very good at it. He holds the whole universe together. And if he can su su sustain the universe, then we can be absolutely sure he can sustain us. Do you know that wonderful verse in Isaiah? Even to your old age and grey hairs, I am he, I am he who will sustain you. I have made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. We can trust Jesus, the one who sustains all things by his powerful word, to sustain us, whatever we might be facing at the moment. At the time of the Reformation, lots of great summaries of Christian truth were written. One of them, uh, the Heidelberg Catechism, it, it, I particularly like, because it not only states truth, it presses home the implications of that truth into our lives. So one of the questions asks us, what does it benefit us to know that God has created all things and still upholds them by his providence? You can join in the answer. We can be patient in adversity, thankful in prosperity, and with a view to the future, we can have a firm confidence in our faithful God and Father that no creature shall separate us from his love, for all creatures are so completely in his hand that without his will they cannot so much as move. And the same holds true from what Paul tells us in this verse. Jesus is the one in whom all things hold together. Jesus, our saviour. So all the more we can know that whatever difficulties we might be facing, we can be patient in affliction. If things are going well, we should thank him. And amidst all the uncertainties there are in our world at the moment, we can trust him, the one in whom all things hold together. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we praise you that not only were all things made by you and for you, but that in you all things hold together. In you we live and move and have our being. We're sorry that so often we live as if you were incidental to our lives. Please help us to see you as you are, utterly supreme, utterly sufficient that we might honour you as we should. And we pray that that patience in adversity, thankfulness in prosperity, and confidence amidst uncertainty would indeed mark us. For your name's sake, amen. Let's join together now in saying the collect for this week. O oh God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers. And because through the weakness of our mortal nature, we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace 
that in the keeping of your commandments we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We're going to sing a song now written by a member of the church family, which is a setting of the psalm we read earlier, Psalm 104. It won't be familiar to, to all of you. Do just listen to the words. himself in light as with a garment, stretches out the heavens like a tent, he set his head and pass on the water, he rides his chariot upon the wind. He Thank you once again for joining us. Now may the one who sustains all things bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you 
and give you peace. Amen.